Um, I'm not going to say too much now. I'm going to hand you over to Samaya. Samaya is a member of, our, of a youth group called Young, Paperless and Powerful. YPP for short. Some of the young people in YPP are undocumented. Some of them aren't. But all of them stand for fairness and equality and for a fair pathway to papers for undocumented young people. So over to Samaya. Well, first of all, I want to thank you all for coming today. It's a cold and dark night of the year and people came and went out of their way to join us and we really appreciate it. Okay. Okay. So my name is Samaya and I'm involved with a group called YPP, Young Paperless and Powerful. And I'm going to tell you a little bit today why are we here and uh, who are YPP. So Young Paperless and Powerful is a group of young undocumented activists who's fighting for a fair pathway to papers for undocumented children and young people. We believe that no young people should grow up undocumented in Ireland or anywhere. We're also a group, we're a group of about uh, 25 young people. Some of us are undocumented and some of us are not. But all of us care deeply about the right of undocumented young people. We stand together in solidarity with each other. So mission in YPP is to make people aware of what it's like to live in Ireland being undocumented and how hard it is. We try to del deliver our message through media. We make short films, we paint the murals and uh, we speak to politicians and uh, we give interviews to newspapers, media, etc. We have a, a Young People and Powerful is a particularly creative group and last year the group came together and they worked on their own spoken word pieces. They're very, very powerful. One young person from YPP is going to read a spoken word piece on behalf of another undocumented member. So I am looking for... I'm looking for Diksha. Here she comes. Great stuff. So a big round of applause because she's going to be excellent and brilliant like all of the speakers. So over to you. Why do I feel this way? Why? I'm trapped. I feel in prison. Suffocating. Strapped down. Immobilized. Unfree. Unable to grow. Unable to escape. I'm silently going through my everyday tasks, but on the inside, I'm screaming to break out. I hate small talk and pursuing small empty dreams. I'm scared I'm going to end up like everyone else in this place and it's slowly driving me insane. But how do I escape? If you only, knew, if you only know what goes through our mind when we're all looking in a, into your phone screen to block ourselves from reality. Because re reality has become too depressing. No one has ever asked me this question. Are you really okay? I break down for anyone does but I still say yes with a smile on my face. Because, because this was has taught me that as a young person, you don't matter. You're not worth it. You're just looking for attention. You're just going through a phase. You're overthinking. Things will get better in the blink of an eye. And I blinked. I blink and nothing happened. Seven years. Seven years in Ireland and I'm still undocumented. I blinked. And nothing has changed yet. I blinked. And the only thing that happened is that I missed a second from reaching my goals. I blinked. And my dream shattered. And I blinked. I'm still the same. I'm still blinking, hoping for a change, hoping that this world will be a better place for us, hoping Ireland will change their view of immigrants like me. I, ca I, just, I can't just wait for things to magically fall into place. If I truly want to live, if I want to be free, then change has to start today. Guys, I'm sure you understand it's very difficult to create a platform for the voices of undocumented young people because it's very risky when they step forward and they step up. Um, but YPP do that perfectly for each other, stepping in and stepping across and standing up with one another. 
the, well, the next input that we have is actually a letter from a young person um, who's involved in Young Paperless and Powerful. His name is Shiv, and it's going to be read by Philippe, actually, who's, um, because uh, Shiv couldn't be here today. So, Philippe, would you like to take to the stage? Thank you. I used to be undocumented. We all have dreams growing up. At a stage of your life, it's all about the fun. Hang out with friends and share mad stories. But what happens when you feel trapped? What happens when you ended up in a situation that you were not aware of? What happens when you realize that you are undocumented? You see, when you are undocumented, you live a double life. You play a character every day when you leave your house, pretending that you are happy and everything is great. But as soon as you reach home, or any time that you are alone, you realize that it's all fake. That your voice will never be heard. That your life does not matter. And this really affected me, like other kids in my situation. And still does to this day. For such a long time, I was suffering from depression, yet I wasn't aware of it. In my mind, I thought that I, that was how you were meant to be. Hide everything, bottle it up, and hope that nobody gets suspicious. This was my life for seven years. Seven long years, where I spent every single day being afraid. Afraid that I would that I would be taken away from my family. I still remember the day my deputy principal offered me the chance to go to Zambia for the Zambian Immersion Project. I was delighted at first, what an opportunity. But then I came back to reality within seconds. I couldn't go because, well, I was undocumented. I lied that I already had plans with my family and that was it. My chance was gone. I went through the same situation after my living certificate in 2011. Getting the second base living certificate result in my school was not enough for me to go to to go to university. Here I was with 455 points, yet that route was already blocked for me. And for four years after my living certificate, I was doing nothing productive. These are the times you start getting really dark thoughts. You have no direction in life anymore because nobody cares about you. That's how I felt. I felt invalid in a country that I grew up in, in a city that I have embraced since my arrival and love so much to this day. Every single year since 2007, I would watch a T-Shock go to the US and seek the legalization of the undocumented Irish. And I thought, what a hypocrite. Ireland has always been a nation of immigrants who left many years ago for a better life. The Irish diaspora in the UK U.S. and Australia, for example, is a testament of how much immigrants can contribute to a country. Yet, when it came for Ireland to embrace the people who chose to make this country their home, we are still waiting for action. From my perspective, it's time the Minister of Justice starts looking at this situation in a more human way. We, in Ireland, are a country that understands that there is a reason people travel because people left Ireland for somewhere else, for a place where they felt they belonged, where they work, adopted the lifestyle and now call home. And trust me, it's the exact same reason undocumented migrants are still in Ireland. Undocumented people make a huge contribution to Ireland, but so often their potential is wasted. We are young, we are full of potential, 
We are products of the Irish educational system who cannot go to university, who, despite feeling valid, still want to contribute to this country and turn their expectations to reality. I was regularized with 2015, nearly two years after my application. Since then, I have been able to go to the college in, in DCU. I have been able to travel with my university. I have been, I, I have been represented MRCI in migrant ex exchanges in New York and Paris. No longer do I have to be afraid to walk past a Garda or even contact them if something wrong happens. Don't make us feel more lonely because loneliness is already a huge part of what it means to be undocumented. I don't want young kids to go through what I had to. It drains you mentally, physically, and before you know it, you are an adult, an adult who has meaningless dreams. But there is hope. You see, facing diversity and conquering their own life on their own leaves, that's in the DNA of every single immigrant all over the world. Immigrants, undocumented or otherwise, are people too, and we have dreams and hope. Okay. Thank you very much, Philippe, for stepping in and delivering that very important message from Shiv. He really wanted to be here this evening and he really wanted to help us to understand just how much regularization and access to papers changes the lives of young people. And if you were listening, you would have heard about how his life completely changed, now being able to access college, no longer living in fear. This is Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Hajar and I'm a journalism student and that's how I kind of came across YPP. I did a project and I did an interview with Kate and uh, Anisha. Uh, and that was the first time that I came across the YPP. I didn't know anything about it until then. And and like I didn't know the stuff that people had, have to go through. Um, I think one of the main reasons that I'm here today is uh, speaking to Kate and speaking to everyone else is just things that we really take for granted and we do every day, people can't do them. And I think a story that really like hit me was like, I think a year or two ago, I was in college in class and then I got a call from my mom and when I answered, she was like really, she, her voice was really shaky and I've never actually heard her like sound so scared before. And um, she was asking me like what to do because our house got robbed and she wanted to report it to the police. Um, and she did and then obviously I, I went back home and the house was kind of like, you know, you know, as what happens when houses get robbed. So we went back home and like, and the police was there and everything. And then that's just something you do, like you report to the police, but it's something so simple, but people who are undocumented don't have that right. Like something that's so basic protection, they can't have that. So I think that's something that resonated with me as well. And I don't want anyone to kind of be put in that situation where they're really afraid, but they can't seek help from people who are supposed to help them. Um, and as well, like, as everybody said, like just the fear of not being able to trust everybody around you and not being able to talk to everyone because you're afraid. And um, that obviously takes a toll, like a huge toll on people. And it's, and it's something that's really sad to be happening to people who have so much like dreams and ambitions and they're kind of restricted by them, by not being able to fulfill them. Um, and one last thing that, I'm, that I kind of also kind of hit home as well is the fact that we can all kind of travel, you know, to, if you have family uh, overseas or whatever, you can always go and see them. But if you're undocumented, it's kind of like saying goodbye to your family for the last time or something. You don't know when you're going to see them. So uh, finally, I'm just here today just to show support and solidarity and just tell them, like, you guys matter and we really want to help as much as we can. A young person um, from Swan Youth Service, extremely talented um, and uh, full of solidarity and love, good vibes, peace and a deep commitment to human rights, uh, wanted to sing a song for us today. And we are delighted. And his name is Melvin. And he's bleeding deadly. So he's going to sing a song. Yeah, so like, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for, for coming up and showing up and support for, in solidarity for the undocumented. It means a lot for you guys standing, like, standing in the rain. And this song is called 27, and I would like to dedicate this, guys, this song to you guys and to all my undocumented friends. Doha, Erin, you guys fucking kill it. Every single one of you is with Fred Play. Well done, thank you so much, yeah? Cause if I must go and die at 27, and at least I know I got a legend. Yeah, now, when you roll and ride like we're together, 
to keep the vibe alive inside forever. These are real feelings from past dealings of people counting me out till I grew up to count millions, huh? Like I guess it's going to be different, huh? Well, I'm a star, so the sky isn't the limit, huh? I'm living like it's my last day. we we'll smoke as if it's not already 27 roaches in the ashtray. Smile as if no one hated it all. As if anyone understood any time I evolved. What do you do and what do dreams come true? If I Bentley, it looks just like you. Now how am I supposed to write a song when I'm famous and all the pain is created? I need to overdose an inspiration at 27. Why don't you just go home? But I can't right now, I'm a rolling stone. And if I must go and fly away, to kiss my baby girl goodnight. It's really his goodbye To set the city on fire And can you take me higher? Hey yo, Pity King, Wazy Can you take me higher? To the undocumented Can you take me higher? Can you take me out here? If I must go and die at 27 And at least I know I died a legend Now, will you go and ride like we're together But keep the vibe alive inside forever Now tell my undocumented friends, YPP, this verse is for you, yeah? But let this word see from my soul And speak through this song Cause if one day I'm no longer here than the physical Then at least I give you my voice to listen to What is a beautiful life without a beautiful death? What is a beautiful mind? How is that beauty defined? Is it for you to decide? Is it my duty to die? No matter how I'm remembered Just let me be remembered It's chaos Um, so I have one more poem for you guys, and it's sort of for anyone who has, is trying to figure out where home is, and what home is, and that feeling when sometimes home is, home doesn't treat you like your home, even in, even if you are, um, and just deciding what that means and what that is. Uh, so this is called Home, and thank you so much for coming, and, and thanks to everyone who came out to show solidarity for Young, Paperless, and Powerful, and the Undocumented here, and then in my other home in America as well. Home. Is it on me like a tattoo? Or in me like an accent? Or is it just the first step on a long route where I keep a toothbrush in the bathroom? Is it on me like complexion? Is it in me to the marrow? Or is it just a bad Skype connection? The way my slang is inflected now. And maybe I'd love to feel a little bit exotic. The chance to be whoever I wanted, move over here and feel like an artist. But to walk into a room with my whole life known. In three years, I'll be gone longer than I was ever home. Is it on me like an outfit? Is it in me like a wish? Or is it the end of a transatlantic flight to where all my anecdotes live? Is it on me like a label? Is it in me like a habit? Or is it when my mom says, I think you're staying, baby. And I've got silence in response to it. My old friends don't call much when they're upset, but I don't call them either. I don't know my mom's routine well, don't know what to tell my father. And that Dublin damp, it might keep the Carolina dust down. <coughs> but when I go home, my eyes well up at the smell of the ground. Is home what I knew or is home what I know? And how do we know when to stay and when to go? Is it on me like a burden? Is it in me like a kindness? Is it on me like a yearning? Is it in me like a conscience? Is it on me like a posture? Is it in me like confession? Is it on me like an option? Is it in me like a lesson? How do I name the pull in my bones? In three years, I'll be gone longer than I was ever home. So this event was organized by Young, Paperless and Powerful. And just to wrap up, I suppose I want to give you a little bit of context. 
YPP has been in existence for two years, but they're really now starting to ramp up the work. We're really at the beginning of a very important journey. We believe very strongly that no young person should grow up undocumented in Ireland. It should not happen. This is our ask, that no young person grow up undocumented in Ireland. You guys get it. It's difficult when you're undocumented and when you're a young person to step out and take action. We are going to need you guys over the next while. We're going to need you to turn up and stand up and create ways and platforms so that young people can have their voices heard, can share their stories and that we can support their fight. So please keep an eye out for us on the MRCI Facebook page and on the MRCI Twitter page. We, we have passed around uh, sign-in sheets and we've asked you if you're willing to join a mailing list. When we're taking action, we will be calling on you again and hopefully we will see you again. So I think there should be three cheers for the young people from Young Paperless and Powerful. So if I said, hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Hooray! Hooray!